Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bill Richter at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Kingwood, Texas. This is our regular Wednesday healing service for May the 18th, 2022. We're delighted that you've joined us today. If you're not so familiar with the service, it is a short service of scripture, prayer, some reflection on the scripture, and meditation. So we are glad that you joined us today. Hope you find it a respite in an otherwise busy week. Um, if you'd like to know more about the church, I will put the web address and the phone number of the church up at the end of the service today. Um, check out what's going on, and if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you so much for being here today. We're delighted and blessed by your presence. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and also with you. Let us pray. Direct your church, O Lord, into the beauty of holiness, that following the good example of your servant, Dunstan, we may honor your son, Jesus Christ, with our lips and in our lives, to the glory of his name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from Sirach. Let us now sing the praises of famous men, our ancestors and their generations. The Lord apportioned them to great glory, his majesty from the beginning. They were those who ruled in the kingdoms and made a name for themselves by their valor who gave counsel because they were intelligent, who spoke in prophetic oracles, those who led the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of the people's lore. They were wise in their words of instruction. Those who composed musical tunes or put verses into writing, rich men endowed with resources, living peacefully in their homes. All these were honored in their generations and were the pride of their times. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all of his possessions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Dunstan, who was Archbishop of Canterbury. Born in the year 909, died in 988. He was born in Glastonbury in the southwestern part of England um, to a family that was, that was um, very well connected with the crown. And it was just assumed that Dunstan would lead a life as, as a, a minister in the royal court, but he was just not cut out for that kind of life. And so he left that life and entered a monastery in 943 and later became a priest in the church. During the Viking invasion of the ninth century, monasteries were the favorite target of the invaders. Monasteries were destroyed, all their valuables were, um, were stolen, and they were often left in ruin. It is in the restoration of the, those monasteries in the 10th century that, that Dunstan played a major role. He returned to Glastonbury as abbot of the monastery. He built a hut um, beside the ruins of that monastery and, and set about uh, a life of study, music, and metalworking, particularly the casting of church bells, an art which he is said to have advanced considerably, and painting. He is considered to be the patron saint of gold and silversmiths. He's a very popular English saint. He's, he's often remembered in literature, sometimes in not so serious ways. One piece says, St. Dunstan, as the story goes, once pulled the devil by the nose with red-hot tongs which made him roar, which were heard three miles or more. Dunstan was made Bishop of Worcester in 
the year 957, and he was made Archbishop of Canterbury in 960. Along with two other bishops who studied under him, Dunstan undertook a revival and restoration of standards for the priesthood and for monasteries. He adopted the Benedictine rule of life for monasteries and insisted that all monasteries be involved in serving the communities around them. He undertook liturgical reforms and he developed a fruitful and productive relationship between church and state. He was patient, persistent, and diligent that, that every, in everything that he undertook. His life of prayer and meditation empowered him to, uh, with the skills that he needed to meet the challenges and issues of his day. He was practical, he was very good at administrative matters, and, and his work really set monastic life in England apart from other areas of the church in the 10th century. He was ready to bring his faith to bear on any situation or circumstance that prevented itself. Not super flashy, steady, consistent, and allowed his faith to guide his decisions in, in how he was a leader, um, a bishop, later an archbishop, and how he um, altered monastic life in England forever. We give thanks for St. Dunstan and his ministry, um, which continues to affect the Church of England down to this day. Amen. Before we begin our litany of healing, I invite us all into a time of quiet reflection and meditation. The idea is to intentionally be aware in this present moment without any judgment at all. It is a difficult thing to do. We know that our thoughts and feelings are going to be trying to intrude in our consciousness, but the idea is to just let those things pass by, not cling to them, not grasp at them. We are more than our thoughts. We are more than our feelings. We are more than our impressions. And the way to get in touch with that is to, is to still and quiet our hearts and rest intentionally in the presence of God. Focusing on your breath is hugely helpful. Maybe notice the movement of air um, in and out of your nostrils as you breathe, or perhaps the, the rising and falling of your chest or abdomen as you inhale and exhale. We will meditate for about four minutes. I will ring a bell for us to start, and our meditation will conclude as the litany of healing begins.
Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. As we gather at this time in the name of Jesus, so may our loving God give you all an inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. May God relieve your suffering and restore you in body, mind, and spirit. May all of us in the frailty of our humanity know God's healing power. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have shared the beauty and pain of human life. Look with compassion upon all for whom we pray and strengthen us to be instruments of your healing in the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. May God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the holy and undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever, amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.